go check on the cat. Are we Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight is the Tuesday night live show. I'm excited to be here. We had major technical difficulties last week, and I wanted to teach this rust technique that I've had so many requests for. So we're back tonight to do it again. So yay! <laughs> I am. Um, I both got the um, the YouTube open, and I've got the Google Plus open. So if you want to go over there and ask me questions, and we have. Hi everybody. Yes, my we're name live. Is Hold on. Hi everybody. My name is Terry. Mute. I always do that. I hear oh. Terry echoing through my brain everywhere. I know. I hate when I do that. Ugh. I always try to remember to go over there, turn that thing off. So, anyways, a little bit of chit chat before while everybody comes into the room. Um, Robin's Nest is having a design team call. So if you're interested in being on a scrapbook team. And it doesn't have to be scrapbooks. We have an altered team on there, and we have a card team. And we're actually really, really looking for somebody to do videos. So if you're interested in any of that, let us know. You get a ton, a ton, a ton of product with that team. Um, one of the things that that company really likes me to do is we cross-promote with a company every single month. So hi, Mark and Karen and Marilyn and Danielle. Welcome. Um, so we cross-promote with a different company every single month over there. And when we do that, you get extra stuff in your packages. So that's really, really cool. So besides getting Robin's Nest stuff, like we're cross-promoting with um, Purple Cow. So you, everybody, all my designers got um, dye and a, um, actually, I just got them. Actually, every designer got this on top of what they already get. So, you know, we give a lot of products. Sorry about the glare there. There we go. So they got a punch and a dye from Purple Cows. So when we do do cross-promoting, it's a really cool thing. So you get a lot of stuff if you're interested in being on that design team. Also have to talk about the fact that we only have, I believe, six kits left for the Graphic 45. These kits are huge, guys. They weigh over two pounds, so or almost two pounds. The team is the Robin's Nest. So if you go to... Um, chatteringrobins.blogspot.com on the top there's three tabs or a, I can't remember there might be multiple tabs one of them says design team call so I hope that answers your question Pamela thank you and welcome Pamela and um, Robin and Pam thank you for joining me we have quite a few in the room already um, so that's one design team call, and I wanted to talk about getting the Graphic 45 kits. There's only six kits left, so if you want to join us, make sure you get those. Um, there, there's a lot of product in there. We're charging $35 for the kit, um, plus shipping. There's $32.50 worth of product in there or something like that, Joe, I believe. Quite a lot. Hold on, I think I turned Joe's mic off. I muted. No, I didn't. Oh, I can't hear Joe, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, because I think I have my. Do I have my mute? Oh, I don't know. I don't know why I can't hear you, Joseph. But anyways, uh, maybe that's not all a bad thing, right? <laughs> yes, you heard that. <laughs> yeah. Love, dear love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble now. He's got these guys' eyes on me the rest of the show now. So, anyways, we wanted to. I had many requests for learning how to do this rust technique. So that's what I'm going to teach tonight, and then we're going to go back into art journaling um, next week. So this week I did want to teach this technique, and I thought it was kind of appropriate because it's kind of around Halloween, and Halloween time you can do like um, think about this. You could do this on. Um, the word I'm looking for on a, a, like a casket or tombstone or oh sorry about that um, that kind of stuff so you know this is a really cool technique that we can do so let me change over to my other camera go and oh let me do one more thing I need to 
get my camera zoom in here for you. Okay. There we go. I always go backwards. Okay. So I want to teach you the rest technique. Now, a few of you did see the show last week, and this is the top that we finished. But I didn't do any more work because I wanted to teach you guys how to do this again. So I'm going to start use on this one, and then we're going to go back over to this, tech, this box. So the first thing you want to do is paint whatever product you have um, in black. I use black gesso, but any type of black um, paint will work. It doesn't have to be black gesso, um, but you definitely want to have uh, a black, you know, a deep dark black. And then the next product that you want to buy is from Golden. And this is called Coarse Pumice Gel. Coarse Pumice Gel. And what this is, as you'll see, is it's kind of, it looks almost like wet sand. It sounds almost like wet sand. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Now there is, when you go to buy this, be careful because there's also a fine pumice gel. You want the coarse pumice gel to do this technique. So make sure you find that. And they do have little jars. This is a, uh, a little two ounce jar, it's kind of like their sample jars, and this will last you quite a long time, so you don't have to go buy a big jar of this, um, you know, so there. Welcome Steve and Debbie and Sky Pathel and um, I'm not sure who else is here, oh, oh Vanessa, if I missed you I apologize. So what you need to do... When you get your pumice, make sure it's the uh, coarse. You first want to paint your um, your surface black, and then I use a spatula to do the to put my um, pumice gel on, coarse pumice gel, and I put it on kind of thin. You don't want it real, real um, heavy. And it's almost transparent. You can almost see through it. See how you can almost see the black through that? Because you don't want this on real heavy. And I don't cover the whole surface. Because if you think about rust, this is kind of that, that what do I want to call it? That, um, the chunky parts that comes on rust. It's kind of like flaking off. This is what it, that's going to look like. Hi, Cynthia. Now you do want to make sure you clean your spatula off. Do not let that dry on there. So I'm just going to grab because it, you know, it's really hard to get off. So I'm just going to real quickly take that off. Now this takes about two hours to dry, and um, and when you first put it on, it almost feels like it's going to fall off and it scares you. But when it dries, it goes on very almost. It's like cement, so it's not going to flake off at all once it dries. Make sure you give it the full two good hour to dry, and then at that point, I go in and paint black again. So let me show you. Take that one away and bring this one in. Also, the rivets. See my rivets? Let's see if I can get us a little better light over here. There we go. That's a little better. See my rivets? The way I did that is I use dewdrops. Dewdrops are actually from the robin's nests. It's funny that I happened to be talking about them earlier. And they're like these tiny little um, circles of plastic. And they come in lots and lots of different colors. That's what I use for my rivets. So what I do, and you can use whatever adhesive you like, but I really like to use crystal lacquer. So let me bring that other one back up here. What I would do, actually I do it before I put the pumice on. I go through and put all the, um, the, the oh, sorry, let me get in, put all my crystal, my dew drops on. 
So I would go all the way down. And I'm not spacing them very well there, but you get the idea. And then I just glue these down. And I don't care what color they are, because when you paint over it with the black, you're not going to see the color anyways. I love dew drops too, Robin. So basically that's how that looks. And that's how I do that. So I actually do put the rivets on first. And I would also put on, pull this up here again. On this particular one here that I'm doing, I put on, um, this is a, this is from Tim Holtz findings. It's one of those uh, die cuts. I cut it out of uh, chipboard. And this one is from One to Scrap. And these are chipboard die cuts from Tim Holtz. So I glued all those on first. I did all of my rivets. I paint everything black. Then I go in and put on my pumice gel. So that's where we are. Everybody with me? And it has no questions. Oh, that's thank you for reminding me. Six. Um, I did send six of the kits out today. So if you are expecting a kit from Joe, six of them went out today. Um, so they sh you should be probably getting them by the end of the week or you know shortly after that. Remember when you get your kits that I have cut or Joe has cut everything out for you. So please don't take everything out of that. Um, package and leave it all in there because it's going to get real confusing if you take everything out. Okay, so I'm assuming at this point nobody has any questions. We paint black, we put our chipboard pieces on, we put our um, pumice gel our pumice gel on, and then we paint black again. So that's where we are here. So you can see how what the pumice gel does. I don't know why the light is so bad tonight. I really don't like my light. That's a little better. Here we go. So you can see what the pumice gel did. It gives you that real cool texture that you're looking for. Now, now you go in and start painting. And I use a combination of about three or four different colors when I do my rust technique. The first one I do is I use Golden's Gel. Um, it's called Patina Green. But if you don't have this, you could use any patina, greenish looking color acrylic paint you have. Mix it with some glaze and put that on first. So that's the first thing I put on. So we're going to come up here. Actually, I'm going to start work on this side. And I come in and I just, honestly, I rarely use a palette. I just work directly on there. I'm not saying that's the best practice, but it's the way I work. And I put in this gray, um, this teal color. And I cover the whole thing. And again, this is um, called Patina Green. And it's a glaze from Golden. But any patina, bluish color paint you want to use, because this is going to be so far in the background, you're barely going to see it, but you really do need this color in there, even if you, you know, we barely see it, you need it in there. It becomes part of the rust. Um, if you don't have the pumice gel, uh, you could probably, and I'm guessing on this, you could probably take um, some sand and some white um, uh, Elmer's glue and get probably the same basic technique. So if you have some rust. Yes, at this point what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm taking off a majority of the glaze I just put on there. So I still have that bluish green color in there, but a lot of it's gone. See that? Because what you do when you do this technique is you kind of just add color on top of color. Okay, hold on. I forgot to shake these babies. Hope that answers your question, Vanessa. So I'm going to take a blob. Of, um, this is actually burnt umber, and this is folk art paint. This is orange, and this is craft smart paint. 
And then this is Red Cobbler, and this is Craft Smart Paint also. And you don't have to use exactly these colors. These are kind of just the ones that work for me. You will need mostly brown and orange and just a little bit of that red. So that's kind of the combination I start off with. And then I grab my paintbrush. And I start coming in and just kind of mixing these colors together and get and you play here you don't get it perfect the first time and I work in sections so if that's a little too brown I come in and get a little more orange and I just keep working until I get the color that I want and a lot of times I'm coming in and I'm wiping off and I don't wipe do you notice I tap Some paper clay slurry and play sand. That's a good one, Pam. That could work too. Absolutely. So as you see there, I'm just kind of coming in and getting the colors. Here I added just a little more red and a little more orange. Again, I do a lot of tapping the colors back out. I think that's the whole trick. You see how that's starting to look already like rust? See that? So, um, Cynthia, are you telling me you peeked at your package? <laughs> I understand. Hey, sounds like I got Joe back. Hello. Hello. And I got your volume back. Now I can hear you, so yay. So, again, I'm just continuing in there. I think I have gotten all the questions, though. And I keep tapping the color back out. See how cool that looks? Oh, that's a little too much red there. Oh, I like that. And I do do a little sections at a time until I get the whole box done. So I'm liking the way that's going. I'm continue. So you guys have an idea of how this works. This could work really cool. Now, think about doing the same technique, but using grays and maybe a little black and a little white. You could make um, tombstones. Um, what else could you do? So, there we go. Yep, you looked... <laughs> It's okay if you look, just put it all back because it's so, there's so much product to that, those kits that I know that when me and Joe took the class at CHA, it got quite confusing. Well, and you had had a drink beforehand, so. Well, we're not talking about the six that you had, though, right? Ooh, baby. <laughs> He was smashed. I had to carry him in, into the place. They almost didn't let us take the class. Now, I will say I'm going to email everyone who ordered the kit in advance. But if folks are listening who ordered the kit, if you want to do anything to prepare in advance, what you could do is trim the border off the 8x8 papers. The 8 by You get 12 8x8 papers, and they have a little half-inch strip that says Graphic 45 and the name of the paper and stuff. So those little half-inch strips or whatever they are, that has to just come off, so you end up with an 8x8 eight eight square. So that is something they could do in advance if they have to reach in that bag, right, Terry? That's a very good idea. I hadn't even thought about that. I probably should have cut them all off when I put them in the package, but I didn't. Isn't that looking good? Doesn't that look like rust? Now, at this point, I do go in and dry it. And I'm going to go to the front here. What you can do at that point, now I did a little bit of this last week on the front, so that's why you're seeing a little bit. You can do a couple of different techniques on top once you get to this point. I have to admit, my favorites are either um, these particular rub and buff type things or rub and buff. 
You can also use mica and mica watercolors. Personally, I don't like the mica because it's a little too shiny for me and I'm looking for rust and I want it to look more realistic to me. So I really did like um, either Rub and Buff or these. This company has been out of business for, I don't know, years. But basically they're nothing but Rub and Buff. And I usually use like um, either the Pewter or the Deep Gold or something, depending on what, what I'm after. And I usually just go in and just put a little bit of, oh, what color do I want? I actually want this kind of coppery here. Come in with this little bit of copper on top, and it gives it just a little bit of shine, but it doesn't necessarily, um, what's the word I'm looking for, give me a uh, sparkle, which I don't like in the mica. The mica gives me too much sparkle, which I don't care for. But if you like sparkle and you're looking for that on your on your packet, on your project, it's the way to go. The mica really looks kind of cool, but if you don't want that, go with Rub and Buff. And you can get Rub and Buff in all of Michael's. This one happens to be patina, so this would give me a really patina look if that's what I was after. And if you you know if you don't like something, oh, I'm trying to get a little out because it's very thick. If you've ever used Rub and Buff, it's just kind of like um, a really thin paste. And I usually go in and get real soft because it's really intense color. See how intense that color is? And I just put a tiny bit there. So this is the patina that they have. Oh, see, that's way too strong there. So yeah, I come in it. That's it. And you can come in and take a lot of it off, you know, by buffing it out. That's where they get the rub and buff co comment. So you just buff it out and get a little less color if you don't want that much intensity. And if all else fails, paint. So if you really do get it too intense, you don't like it, you can go back over it with paint and get the color that you were looking for originally. So the best part about paint is there's is you can just go over it. If you don't like it, make it go away. Oh, uh, Debbie, you did a great job on your um, that that uh, star that you made. She put. If you want to, um, I do prizes. I'm not going to be doing a prize tonight just because we had problems with last week. Um, but I do do prizes, and the way you get involved in prizes with me is you join my group, All Things Terry Sproul, and that's on Facebook, and you post um, samples of what you did. It's just a little too red over there. Um, with the technique that I taught on my show. Next Tuesday, we are going to go back into doing um, uh, art journals mainly because I have some of the funnest new stamps that are all Halloween that I want to play with and do in the art journal so I want to show you those. I also want to show you my new stamp line I got just in the mail a couple days ago. So anybody have any questions on how you do that? Then here's my my side that we just did. And Like I said I come in with the rub and buff and I want the Huh. This copper. You can just hit the top of these real quickly. Just give them just a tiny bit of color. So maybe it looks like they didn't rust completely through. Just parts of them has rusted. I'm just barely hitting the top of those. See that? Look at the look at how cool that is. I like that. I might have to go around and do them all when I do, get done with that. Okay, I like that. Does anybody have any questions on how to do this technique? And I would just continue around the box. And I just do it in little sections like I showed you, like I've been doing. Uh, you shouldn't. It's only YouTube. I'm not sure what's, what the question is, Debbie. I'm not sure what your question is. 
So while the YouTube catches up over there, I'm going to see if anybody has any questions. And then I'm going to show you a couple of new things I want to show. And then I'm going to let you go early tonight. Yay! Checking. It looks like we have no questions. Because it should be long enough to get over there. No questions? I think the only bad part about this is I go through lots of tissues. <laughs> but I love this. I'm actually submitting this to uh, uh, Just Steampunk for the next issue. I'm hoping to get in. Okay, since I'm assuming at this point there is no questions. I actually did use black gesso, Debbie, but I don't think you would have to use black gesso. Um, honestly, I rarely buy black acrylic paint because I just use black gesso. Yes, it's more expensive. I agree. Um, I don't know why. I guess I'd rather buy another color paint than buy black since I have black gesso at home. Is that... <laughs> That's my only logic. There is no other logic to that. There is no logic to my thoughts on why I don't buy acrylic, black acrylic paint. Oh, I love the way that looks. Can you mix the colors to make the rust color? Not really, because brown, unfortunately, is a very dominant color. All Things Terry Sproul um, is the group. What is the Facebook page named again? I'm tried All Things Terry Sproul without success. Um, try it without putting all the. Um, it's all one word. You know, um, put spaces in between the words. All Things Terry Sproul. Uh, but no, Vanessa, you cannot mix those three colors together because if you mix those three colors together, watch. Basically, you're going to get nothing but brown. It doesn't really... Brown's too much of a dominant color, so you're not going to get the, the, the... That's why I tap the colors on, because then I can come in where I do want to have a real intenseness of the orange a little more with the brown on top. It really does make a difference if you tap it on over mixing it all in one. I agree the black gesso probably would work better over the uh, the dew drops than um, black acrylic paint. You're probably right there. So this kind of is not really rust. Thank you for sending her the um, the uh, the link. I appreciate that. So basically, do you know how to do a rust technique now? So that's really cool. And you can do this. Look at this one. This is um, again a chipboard. Started off as chipboard, just like that. I even prove it. It's chipboard on the back. See? And then here. Thank you, Peggy. Here it is with the paints. That looks like it's been rusted. I love the way that looks. And that could be added on top here if I want it to. Okay. I want to show off my new line of stamps I just got in from Sin City. And that's SinCityStamps.com. Sorry about this. This is, uh, this is a mirror. There's nothing I can do about it except for doing that maybe. There we go. There's a mirror, and these are my new stamps. Aren't they pretty? They're all leaves. And this is a really fun technique. I just I just made this today. See, aren't those pretty? They got great detail. These stamps actually have amazing detail. I'm really, really happy with the way they turned out. And it's a whole set. Um, it's a whole plate of leaves and you get quite a few on the plate. The whole plate's twenty dollars. So you get one, two, three, 
four, five, six. You can even see it, see the ones I haven't stamped yet. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen stamps. So there's thirteen stamps total in this uh, collection for twenty dollars, and they're all leaves. So these you can get over at Sin City Stamps, and the detail is just amazing. Sorry about the light this time. I'm really not happy with the light. i got to figure out what's different. It's amazing. You don't change anything. It looks different every time I go on camera. But they're really great detail. And I made this today with it, with those stamps. And I'll actually show you how to do this technique um, on another day, because uh, I actually will do this in our journal. But it was really cool the way I did this. This could be done either with gelatos, or it could be done with, um, um, these are oil pastels is what I did this with. But you definitely could do the same technique with gelatos, and the colors are really pretty. So yeah, I got this, um, this frame at uh, Hobby Lobby for $1.50, and I made this really cool, sorry about that, I keep forgetting that, really cool uh, project. And it's going to go on my blog here soon, I don't know when. Whenever I have a do uh, something due. Okay, does anybody have any questions? I am going to change cameras and see if anybody has any questions. Let you guys go early tonight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry, sorry. Hold on, gotta change cameras. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Why am I so close? Wow. <laughs> Back up. Back up. Wow. I was wild, wildly close. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so anyways, next week I want to get back into art journaling because I still have a lot of techniques that I want to show you and some really cool products. And um, matte, medium, matte medium will seal the box. Yes, you could if you felt. I don't feel it needs to be sealed, but if you feel like these pieces are not um, coming off, you know, it's not. You could put matte medium over this whole thing if you wanted to, um, but personally, I probably wouldn't. Here's what we did tonight. Love the way the the uh, brads look. Yes, you could definitely use um, paper uh, PPA from um, US Art Quest. You could use. You could actually use um, clear gesso to seal it if you wanted to. You can use Mod Podge if you want to seal it. Just be careful, though, um, on sealing it. If you use something that's glossy, you're going to have a glossy look, and you might not want the glossy look with the uh, with a rusty thing. So make sure you don't use something that's glossy, that you definitely look for something that's matte, I think, personally. But, you know, whatever, you know, makes you happy. <laughs> personally, I would do matte. Any other questions? I know this was a quick one tonight, guys. I, I didn't, you know, I'm sure you don't mind going off early, do you? I hope not. <laughs> and remember to get your kits because there's only, we're doing that on um, October 27th. We are doing the, um, the, the class. Yes, it would be a very cool technique on, your, on the outside, especially on the outside of your art journal. I think it would be awesome. Awesome. Oh, I should do that. Oh. Um, this particular box that I use here is a wood box that I bought at Michael's. But this can, technique can be used on anything you want. It could be used on paper. It can be used on um, wood. It could be used on anything. Except for it probably could not be used on something that is, um, thank you, Joe, for putting that up. There's the link. Joe just put the link up for the class if you want to get the kit. We're doing that class on the 27th. It's a Sunday. Um, that it, You could not do that technique on something that is not porous. So glass, you could not do that. Thank you, Debbie. Quickies are good. <laughs> I know. I'm bad.
Okay. Um, so if you want to get your kit, get that. You need to register also. So if you have not gotten an invite from me and you want an invite from me, find me on Facebook. I'm on Terry Sproul. Um, find me on Facebook and I will send you an invite to the class because it is an online class. The registration is free. The kits are $35. You must register. That's very important. You cannot get to this class like you can here. You have to register for this class. And you don't have to buy the kit but to watch, but we are not giving out measurements. So you will not be able to make the book again. So buy the kits. We only have six left. <laughs> I know I'm evil. <laughs> we are not doing it. <laughs> Buy today's special offer. Uh, yes, Blue you, Light Special. It's, it's a big special, I'm telling you. They were $85 just two weeks ago. $35 now. $35, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fabulous. You're going to want extra ones to give to the kids. You're going to yes, want to you are. And yes, you can attend the class without the kit. But if you attend without a kit, you got no class, basically. You should get a kit. Darling, I agree. Buy a, buy a few. I agree. It's really worth it, guys. The, the amount of product that's in these kits, if you went out and bought what we are giving you, it's going to cost, um, it would actually believe it cost you more than what we're sending it to you. The class, um, I don't know what time you're... We need these out of my living room. <laughs> and out of my living room. Um, the class is at uh, noon Eastern time, Debbie. I'm sorry, I cannot calculate your time. Remember, too pretty for math. <laughs> Number one in my life, Joe. <laughs> Number one in my life. <laughs> well, I know, I know people on YouTube out there have purchased this kit. We need a testimonial like QVC. Get out there and put a comment in that room and tell them how fabulous this is, how much stuff was in your envelope. It is a lot Let's of product. Caller, do we have a caller on the line? Hi, oh, yes, this is Sally, and I bought the kit. I'm so excited. I just never heard you could get so much stuff in a kit. Oh, my God. See, there you have it. There's Sally. Sally, thanks. Where you call it from? Oh, Massachusetts. See? Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, guys, go get your kits over at CreightonCraft.com. And, um... Hopefully there's no more questions. <laughs> Too early Monday morning. Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> oh, that's 5 a.m. Oh, yeah, 5 a.m. is early. <laughs> I'm getting up at 9 to do it if it helps any. Not really, huh? <laughs> and actually, guys, I have two classes tomorrow. Um, so actually, I'm going to be getting off to Sunday. Yes, the 27th at noon Eastern on the 27th. That is a Sunday. And um, I hope everybody can attend. The class is absolutely free. Um, you're basically getting product. It oh, is. We have a testimonial. Jinka my frink. Jinka my frink. Jinka my frink's on the air. Jinka my frink left a testimonial. <laughs> it is a Fabo kit, isn't it? Wait, you guys get it who haven't gotten it already. Oh, and I love you more than before now. <laughs> Although Ann said kit it or not, I thought she said kilt it or not, and I think, oh, I don't have a kilt, but a kilt would be an interesting fashion accessory. <laughs> I could see you in that. We could, I've seen you. we could go to kilts to CHA. You've got red hair. You could look Irish. I'm game. I'm so game. I mean, I went in my bra. Come on. Yeah, this would be a little bit more clothes than you're used to wearing at a public event, but I still think you'd like it. That's right. It could, it could be good. <laughs> It could be a good thing. You never know. They might let me in. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> oh, yes, it's early, but um, but it's worth it. It's a really cool um, technique that we teach you how to make this book. And you can make this book over and over and over. No, Joe has not been drinking. Joe doesn't drink, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's him naturally, isn't it scary? <laughs> oh, Karen Buchanan just asked, 
yes, we can ship kits to Canada. I have to have, if you send me, like, the form you just filled out to ask your question, Karen, just send me your address and I can get you a price quote. Because I have figured out how to ship to Canada. Oh, Peggy Oliver, where are you? They're Who expensive. So many forms. I was thinking, oh, my God, they're just, like, right across the, the, there's not even a pond or anything. They're right there. And yet it was so many paperwork. It was amazing. It's ridiculous how much stuff you have to do to Canada. For Canada, oh, you poor people. <laughs> Peggy should have driven down to my house and get it. Oh, she's on the West Coast. She'd have to go to your house. Yeah. She, it probably would have been cheaper. <laughs> I was shocked. I don't know how they get stuff to Canada. I think it's cheaper shipped to Guam. Well, Pam, you never know. We might do this class again. We are talking about, believe it or not, doing it again and getting the Christmas stuff from um, from Graphic 45. If I if I let Joe into the Graphic 45 booth, so we might be doing it again. So I never know. I love me some shopping at Graphic 45. Diane Schultz sees me coming. She's like, woohoo! Yeah, me. and I'm I'm holding it back, going, whoa, boy, come on. Oh, that is not true. Terry's at the neighboring booth saying, boy, I want one of these, one of these, two of these. Can we have one of these? Do these come in singles? If we have to buy three, Joe, do you want one? Do you want two? How about you take two, I'll take one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got him to do it, so I'm not all dumb, am I? Even talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, we had so much fun at CHA, and I ordered so much Graphic 45 stuff that when the stuff got here, I called Terry and said, Terry, I don't even remember what I was going to do with all this stuff. <laughs> Stacked up by the front door. Well, then, then you sent me more. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God, look at all these boxes. I got three boxes. So anybody near Columbus, Ohio, come on over and shop in the living room. <laughs> yes, I'll be hopefully coming here, coming soon. So. Well, after your house guest comes to California, but we still have to work that out. Bite me. <laughs> okay, time to wrap up. Say good night. Okay, time. guys, we're leaving now. Everybody have a great night. See you next Tuesday. We're going to go back to art journaling. If you have any questions, catch me on Facebook. Love you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.